Hey guys, this is Echo Sourx bringing you a special video looking at a new free product that was released just a day or two ago by Isotope. If you don't know who Isotope are, they are the masterminds behind plugins like Ozone and Nectar, as well as some other ones like Trash, and they have a bunch of cool plugins. But they released a free product, and it's only free until, I believe, March 6th. So download it now. There's no reason for you not to download this. It is called DDLY or Dynamic Delay Processor. It is a delay plugin and it will normally be 50 bucks. So jump on this soon, guys. It's a really cool plugin. I've been messing around with it now for about a day and it's really fun. I haven't taken it to, um, I have a, I'm at my little project studio in my, in my, uh, apartment right now, but I haven't taken it to my actual studio. And I want to use it on some vocal sessions because the idea of this dynamic delay processor is actually really cool. And I don't know why more delays don't work in this way. So what you're looking at on the screen is the actual plugin. But before we get going into talking about it and what it does a little bit, I wanted to bring up the system requirements. So all you have to do to get it is go to isotope.com and you will, it's free through March 10th. So I got that wrong, not the 6th. It's free from when it was released until March 10th. So you just have to log in to your account if you're an existing Isotope user or you need to start an account. And then it's completely free, just enter in some stuff. And here are the system requirements, Windows 7, 8, and 10, Mac OS X 10.8 through 10.11. The plugin formats are listed here, VST2, VST3, audio unit, both 32 and 64-bit, AAX for you Pro Tool cats out there, RT RTAS, and Audio Suite, and AAX. So you get all these different things, so you can really use it with any DAW, Logic Live, Pro Tools, Cubase, Reaper, Studio, etc. So it's really easy to download, jump on that. Now, the, uh, the interface is kind of weird. I, I think it's it's a cool interface. I don't like how it's kind of like grayed out. I wish the controls were a little bit more uh, vibrant. But what can you do? So the reason it's called dy dynamic delay processor is instead of just running in audio into a delay, like a stereo delay plugin or a sample delay, and then it splits the signal into the d delay between the dry and wet signals, this is actually looking at the transients of the audio. So the whole idea is to make a more musical delay that doesn't just turn your mix into a muddy mess. So a really common thing to do on vocals, which is why I said I really want to test it out on a vocal track, is you automate your delay tails. So let's say, let's say a singer is singing. You know, this isn't singing, but let's say here is a line and here's a line. Well, instead of having the delay just wash over everything, what you would typically do is chop up some of your audio at the start and end points, and you would automate a delay. So you might go into here, and you would grab an automation. We'll just do this with the volume right now. Let's say this was automating a delay plugin on my channel strip. Well, what you do to keep this line clear but still have delay in this space is you would automate up your delay like that. And if you're using a stereo delay plugin, you might have to do it for both the left and right. So what that does is it, is it keeps things cleaner in the middle of the phrasing. It doesn't just suck it back into the mix because delay can, can create this three-dimensional kind of uh, imaging with your mix, just like reverb can. And so if you have too much delay through the whole pass, it's going to just get muddy. But the dynamic delay processor will help. You, you can really tell it how to react to certain transients. And because it's actually two delays in one, it can become a very musical effect and something that you don't have to struggle with in context of a mix. So let's look at the interface real quick. So it's, it's basically you have two delays in one. The top delay is up here and the bottom delay is down here. And it, there's an on and off switch for both of the delays. And that's the little power button. And when you turn it off, all of the controls gray out. And then you have the solo button. So if you want to solo that, just that one delay to see what's happening, you select it and it will go green. So the interface, as you can see here, it's, it's like I said at the beginning, it's not, my, it's not my favorite interface. It's a little bit confusing, but once you get used to it, it's probably fine and easy to work with. But you'll see here when I turn this power on, it's green. So anything that I do up here is going to be green. 
um, in sense of which delay type I select solo it and then this wide function. So if you have the wide off, it'll be pink. If you have it on, it'll be green. So you have a similar, you have similar controls for the top and bottom delay. You have a solo, you have it on and off, you have sync, you have these little t uh, symbols that say A and G. And then depending on what you're clicked on, it'll be time, feed, trash, dry, and wet. And then time, feed, pitch, size, and mix. And that's the exact same for the top. So it's two delays in one. And the idea is to give you kind of, I, I guess it's, you can do multiple things with this, is you can really control the blend between the delays and you can really use each of the two modes. There's two modes with this, the A and the G. They stand for the different modes and, and that's going to tell the DDLY how to process the incoming audio. So the A stands for analog. The analog delay is, I wouldn't call it a completely analog because it does have its own unique sound and the fact that you can use the trash control which is kind of like a distortion added to the uh it's kind of di you're distorting the delayed signal it's not super analog it's it's just not as i guess um it's not as futuristic as the the uh the second mode here the grain delay mode but with the analog mode you're going to get kind of has like a lo-fi sound and it kind of uh, it, it degrades it almost sounds like a little bit like a smear shifting delay which is really cool so we can we can listen to that now I have a let's just play this little demo for you real quick with everything on All right, so that's the delay, and I'm soloing this top delay section, which is on analog right now. So you can see it's, just, it's not just a pure clean delay, and if I turn this trash control up, the distorted signal, or the wet signal, the delay signal gets very distorted. So that's what's going on. You have time. Uh, these controls are pretty basic. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these time. You can do anything from 64th note triplet all the way up to eight eight uh, bars. So it, it's eight dotted bars. So, so you can do a lot of stuff with it. All right, so there's the, f the feeds going to determine how much of the audio is going to be back into the input. Trash is going to distort the delayed signal. Then you have dry and wet controls. Those should make sense to you if you're checking out a delay plugin uh, video. Now down here you have this uh, this little screen section which shows you what's happening with both the intensity and the transients and how the delay is reacting, which is cool. But before we hit that, let's talk about the grain mode. This is going to sound a lot different, so I'm still soloed. It's just still this top one. So this one's really cool, and this is the one that I actually I wanted to have it on when I played the demo for you. You can actually create like melodic, weird, melodic, futuristic sounding delays. <laughs> So you have time, pitch, size, and uh, time, feed, pitch, size, and mix. Now, the difference here is in the analog mode, you have trash and dry and wet. Now, here you have size and mix and pitch. So the size is going to be how long that the um, that pit, it's going to set the grain size of the actual pitch. And then this is this works in semitones, which is pretty cool. And then the mix is going to be how much. So let's turn the mix away. So you can get some really cool stuff going. Now, talking about these other controls down here, you have this intensity knob, which is go. the intensity is going to uh, set how much of the signal, you can see the little hop key right there, is going to send to either delay. Now remember, these two delays in one, separated by this little graph. So then you have the level, which is going to set the signal split. So the signal ab above the split is sent to this top delay, and the signal that's below this split is sent to the bottom. So for this sound, I have this really interesting one on the top one with the, with the grain delay mode. Now, I don't want a lot of it. I'm going to want to blend it so it's a little bit more musical in my example with this one. So let's solo the bottom delay. Okay, so if we, if we play both of them together now, So 
So now, now it's going to be more of that first delay. So you can really blend between the two. So if I play these with the demo now. It's kind of a cool delay, and I like what I can hear coming from this. So there is kind of a rundown in the, in the main controls there. And then you also have a filter section where you can filter out things or filter out frequencies for the top delay up here, the green one. And then you also have one down here where you can filter out frequencies for the bottom delay. So this one's helpful, I think, for obviously if you're going to be using the grain delay mode because you can if, if you get weird little artifacts building up, you can kind of filter them out. Then you get this panic. This is going, to, it says it flushes the delay line of the process signal. So let's look at that real quick. All right, so there. All right, so let's bring bring these blend these signals together. Let's filter out. Some of that top delay, and that's kind of a cool sound. And then finally you have these two wide controls. Um, and th what this will do is it will basically change the phase of the delayed signal and push it out wider into the mix. So let's solo the bottom one, listen to it with wide on and off. So you can hopefully hear that. It's a little bit wider. It's not, it's not a huge drastic effect. And let's pull up a multimeter and check this out while we do it. So you can see it's more in the center there. Turn it back on. And you'll notice that the delay, the way I have things set with the transient, it's kind of not happening right on the initial, the initial hit of that vocal sound, which is really nice because in the correlation of the actual transient, the phase cor of the uh, the phase correlation of the actual transient of the sound isn't too phasey. It's not appro approaching the uh, negative one side of anything or zero. Watch, watch this. Now the delay gets more phasey and heads more towards that towards the stereo side of things, but the actual transient isn't. So that's that idea of this this delay is to keep things a little bit more musical, to make it a little, little more easy when you try to get to the mix and not have this muddy stereo kind of imaging issue. All right, so let's unsolo that now, and we can we can keep wide on for both of these and play it. All right, so that's a pretty cool sound. It's pretty fun. It's pretty musical. Uh, this has just been a quick crash course into this free plugin from Isotope, guys. Strongly suggest that you check this out. Free stuff is always amazing, especially when free stuff is as good as this. I also do want to touch on that you can actually automate with this in your DAW, which is pretty cool because some free stuff doesn't give you that, that option, but everything's automatable. Uh, if automatable is even a word, but what the hey, I'm going to use it in this video. So if you have any questions or comments, post them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.